Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, the reflection I want to offer for all of us is around the theme of family. That is, we as a parish, as Holy Trinity, are a family of believers. And how are we a family? Well, technically speaking, we are a family by baptism, and through baptism we are then grafted on or adopted into the life of Christ, and then he becomes our brother in this spiritual sense. And that means then our father is uh, truly our adopted father, uh, and he, we are his adopted sons and daughters. Now, as a parish community, I wonder if sometimes we don't quite grasp all that, because there's consequences to this reality. Uh, the, the fear is when we don't have the sense of family, we are more like consumers. A consumer is someone that goes out and just will shop around and will look for the best deal, right? And if they don't get what they like, they'll move on to something else, another uh, business or another product. This is not how we should be church. We need to then be family, and as families, stewards of each other. Uh, here's some scriptures. I just want to share this with you. These are two scriptures. One is from Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 19. It says, so, so then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. And of course it is Jesus who brings us together. It is him who is our center. He is our brother in this adopted sense. And But be mindful, that doesn't mean then that we're uh, just strangers. In fact, we may not know each other, but we are being called actually by this to get to know each other better. And you know one of the wonderful ways that Holy Trinity has done this, uh, and I applaud everybody, especially those folks who do our newcomers welcome. I just had, I just went to, I think the third one we've had since I've been here. And it was wonderful. Lots of people there. People are coming to our parish from other locations, uh, moving into the area. And we give them an opportunity to get to know a real brief, an introduction to all the gifts and the, uh, the culture and the different ministries that are there. And it gives them an opportunity to ask questions and they even get a tour of the campus, a brief tour of the campus. So this is a great way. I'm, you know, against it, I call it the economy of scale because we're such a large parish community. Um, we do this quarterly. That's not common, I think, in a lot of parishes, but that's a gift to us that we can do that. And I want to encourage us to continue that as well. And if you're new to the parish, be mindful. We will announce it but, uh, and put it in the bulletin. When the next, if you haven't gone to one, one of the next uh, newcomers social occurs, I would encourage you to go to it yourself to get to know people. Because as long as we come to church and we're by ourselves, which maybe you might be, but you don't know anybody, it'll always seem big and a little cold. No matter how warm the building is, and no matter how beautiful the music is, or hopefully the preaching, uh, it'll always seem a little bit, we'll be disconnected a bit. And that then can stir in that sense of being a consumer. And we don't want to do that. And I promise you, you don't want to do that either, because when things are down, uh, we really don't need to be alone. We need to be accompanied, as Pope Francis shares with us. And I love that idea that we walk together. Uh, biblically, we say we are our brother or sister's keeper. Uh, that is not a rule that's supposed to be, you know, heavy, but we are to help each other out and get to know people. Um, for me, that's how I learned the community. Here's a case in point. I just learned uh, a couple days ago, actually it was Sunday night, about Lena Frost. Lena Frost is 102 years old and she was nearing death. And luckily the, her grandchildren contacted the, our church and talked to Aaron, or Aaron talked to them, and in the course of time, we're able to determine that she needs to be given the sacraments for the dying. And so I got a call on Sunday night, and I was able to go uh, immediately to see her. And I would have never met her or really gotten to connect with her family. But because the family, knowing themselves to be part of our community, and also knowing Aaron, being connected, we're able to then allow this to happen. But I wonder how often this doesn't happen. How often maybe people are alone, they're not connected with the community, although they may go to our church, they don't connect, and so therefore we're unable to help. And so that's what family does, is we, we help each other out. 
Here's another uh, text I want to read to you. This is from Hebrews chapter 10, and this is verse 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. How do we do that? I mean, there's a lot of things that can be in our way. There can be sickness. There can be struggles. There could be problems in our nuclear family, our own biological families. There could be an issue with you know, health. It could be a work thing. Who knows? But we're called to hold fast to the confession. That means then keep the faith. Be strong. It continues. For he who promised is faithful. That means Jesus is always going to be with us. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. That's what happened to me on Sunday. I didn't know that I needed to go see anybody except for someone let me know. And Aaron, uh, you know, through dialogue with her, we were able to find out that that was something that we needed to do. It says, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The word the day is considering the day when Christ comes. Wouldn't it be amazing if we were all called together when Christ comes? We're at church when Christ finally comes in a second coming. But So that for me is powerful because there's so many benefits and so many wonderful things that help us when we are together as a family. And it is, first of all, corporate worship. It is difficult, I mean, from those of you who are watching this and maybe are staying home for, again, whatever reason, uh, you know how difficult that is. It may be convenient in some way, but it also it causes a problem, and that is you're not with your family. You are at a distance, and that's maybe all that can be done. I have a family, too, and we're at a distance. Sometimes that's all we can do, but um, maybe you've been here before. I want to encourage you to reconnect Rethink about what's going on, evaluate the situation that you're in, and give good thought to the need that is to be family at Holy Trinity. Being family means then coming to church, actually physically being there. I must tell you, there is something to be said about actually being there. An analogy I like to use is a football game, if you don't mind. I'm a football fan, so hopefully if this doesn't work for you, you can, you can still make the leap. So I like watching football because I can't get to a football game. And sometimes when it's freezing out there, I probably want to stay home anyway. But here we are. If Jesus was, let's say, the quarterback or the owner, and he asked me to come to the game, that would be great. It's just something very different to actually be at a game. I've been at Oregon State Beaver games, and I'll tell you, the event character, I love this term, I don't know where I picked it up, but the event character of being there is wholly different than watching as kind of a spectator. Um, when, before I came to Holy Trinity, another example, and I get back to the football one, but the, when I, before I came to Holy Trinity, I was able to watch the liturgy and mass uh, online. And I was able to see how things are done. And I, I was told how great the choir was, and I did see on the, the, uh, the video that the choir was good. But you know, as I then arrived to the parish, Wow, how much more powerful it was to actually be present to the live event in person with hearing the choir, just in that one data point of Mass. So it's one thing then to be watching uh, a football game. It's another thing to be in the stands and to be present. But even more so, this coach is wanting you to be and I to be in the football game. So if Jesus is that person, he's invited us to not just be a spectator when we come, but to be fully involved, mind, body, and soul. But we can't do that if we're not there. And it's something different than, we, for example, when we say, let us show the sign of peace, and we turn to each other. And let's, for me, from my perspective, I see everybody, it's warm, it's welcoming. This is where we, we you know, reconnect our bonds just before receiving communion. And then comes what I'll just call an altar call, the Catholic altar call we have every Sunday Mass. You can't do that if you're at home, right? And so when we have this altar call, we come forward and we are with our brothers and sisters, our family members, and we come to see Jesus himself and he gives himself to us and we receive him truly, fully, sacramentally in the Eucharist. Now, when we watch online, we can, there's a little you know, thing we put up on the video there for a spiritual communion. And that's maybe the best one can do when one can't be there. 
But that's the question I want to encourage us to say and ask ourselves. Truly, can I be not be there? And maybe that is the case. But maybe I need to rethink. Maybe now is the time. You know, COVID, for example, is waning. Uh, like our 8 o'clock Mass has lots of space in it. In fact, in our day chapel, there's even more space. We can always sit in the narthex or stand in the narthex. There's lots of options. Narthex, by the way, is a, the entryway, uh, the lobby, if you might say. There's lots of room there. We have plenty of space. And so I want you to think, Jesus is asking you to get in the game. And he wants you to be with him. But not just with him, but with his people, your family, the church, the body of Christ, who we are as we are here to meet together, we're called together by him himself. So ponder on these things. And there's more to be said. And I'd love to hear your comments or, or thoughts or questions. So as you watch this, uh, maybe through uh, maybe YouTube or Facebook, please go to Facebook. That's where the comments are. And and please send you know put some comments in there. Let's let's have a conversation. You can also email me at father excuse me not yeah father bill at h hyphen t dot org. I got lots of emails, so I'm pondering which one am I talking about. So this is the parish one, father bill f r b i l l at h hyphen t dot org. And I'd love to enter into a dialogue with you, or maybe even call you up and have a conversation. And uh, this is how we begin. This is how we start the conversation. This is how, if you've been away, maybe uh, have a conversation about um, what's been going on with you. I'd like to get to know you. Maybe you want to have a conversation about um, the things that are going on with you. Maybe why you're staying away, and maybe I can encourage you. You know, I don't want to push you. Obviously, if there's true, real issues, there may be a real need to to lay low for a little while. But know that we love you, uh, and when you're gone, we do miss you. Somebody knows you, and that's what we're called to do, is to know each other so that we can grow together and then go and tell people about what we've experienced, that Christ is present in our midst through the community, through the word we hear, and through the Eucharist. Oh, I almost forgot something, and that is this weekend is World Marriage Sunday, or World Marriage Weekend, because... You know, Sunday is one of the days. We include Saturday in that. And during this weekend, we will be having, uh, well, the theme will be about marriage, right? And I haven't worked out the homily yet, but that's going to be something of the theme. But during or after the homily, after the creed, we'll be then having a renewal of your love for each other with your spouse. And it'll sound similar to your vows, but not exactly the vows. And it'll be, I think it's a wonderful moment. Lots of people enjoy this. But it's a, a moving time for couples to look each other in the eye once again and to uh, remind each other of the love commitment that they've made for each other. Now, as Deacon Brett said last week, if you watch the whole Mass and the announcements, make sure it's your spouse, okay? Not somebody else's spouse. <laughs> and that's a joke, of course. <laughs> but I want to encourage you. This might be an opportunity if your spouse comes on occasion to really uh, have her or, or him come with you. Just This is a very special time uh, of love between the two of you. And, a, and in fact, especially wonderful because before the church, the family, right? And also Christ, who is, if you're in a sacramental marriage, is bonding you together. And so I hope to see you this weekend. God bless you and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.